ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಮಸ್ವೇ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಮಸ್ವೇ ಅವತಾರಿಷ್ಠೆ ನಮ ಹಸೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಹಸೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ let us bow down to shri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate let us pray to him to remove all our ignorance to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge from unreal to the real from death to immortality today's topic the grace of god the more we think intensely about the grace the more we become peaceful and we feel a kind of immense joy it's only through the grace of god we are able to live the life in spite of many hardships in spite of many difficult situations if you become aware of the grace then it becomes easy for you to move onward in your life so grace of god is very significant it is one of the most mysterious phenomena of spiritual life we all need the grace without grace nothing is possible do you think it is easy to resist all temptations in life do you think it is easy to turn away from the world do you think it is easy to live the life of spirituality we all 
very much need the grace. Once a disciple asked Holy Mother, Mother, how does one realize the truth? Is it through worship? Is it through making ajapa japa, constant repetition of the divine name? Is it by sitting long hours in meditation? Mother answered the disciples' questions very easily. And the answer was very simple and direct. The answer indicates the supreme greatness of the Holy Mother. Holy Mother said, Well, my child, none of these can help you. The disciple was stunned. Then what is the use of all these practices? What is the use of this religion? What is the use of uh, reading the holy scriptures and so on? Then mother tells him further, it's only through his grace. Grace, Kripa, that's very important. But, Mother continues, one must practice meditation. One must do Japa. Constantly, they are all important from the aspirant points of view. These things will remove the impurities of the mind. What all spiritual practices we are all doing, it's all meant for the purification of the heart. The moment you are purified, you will see how God's grace fills up your heart very quickly. God's grace is flowing, but it is not able to fill up your heart an account of the impurities of the mind. So, worship, japa, meditation, all these have immense value. You can't discard them. You can't simply bank upon, oh, it's only through God's grace one gets it. Let God's grace come whenever it comes. Why should I bother? Alright? If you take that stand, then don't bother for anything. Keep quiet. Then why do you shout and cry and complain, all sorts of things? If you handle a flower, a fragrant flower, continuously, you get its fragrance. Your hand smells sweet, very good fragrance. 
सपोज यू आर रबिंग द सैंडलवुड ऑन द स्टोन यू गेट द स्मेल ऑफ सैंडलवुड द सेम वे वन गेट्स स्पिरिचुअल अवेकनिंग by constantly thinking of god how nicely mother has made it very simple and direct it's easy to understand the language of the mother and further mother says you can realize the truth you can see god right now if you become desireless but you cannot become desireless without the grace of god it's very tricky that's how we enjoy the game game means like that always there will be tricks if you know the trick you won you will win the game that's the point then what indeed is a grace of god it's very interesting subject who can define the grace it is like this can anybody say that yes only incarnation of god definitely can say such is the grace of god because the mahatmas the holy people because of their realization of the truth they know everything what is what so they can immediately say and make the disciples feel the flow of grace so the point is this grace is entirely a supra rational phenomenon it is beyond the power of an ordinary man to say that the grace ought to be like this or ought not to be like that we can't possibly frame a code of conduct for god that means grace of god is entirely god's personal prerogative lord krishna himself speaks about grace if you are aspiring to receive the grace of god then follow what shri krishna has said the difficulty is we want the result without doing anything which is impossible do something then you expect something that is understandable not doing anything expecting something is not correct so lord krishna says maam abhijanati yavanyascha asmi tatvatah 
ತೋ ಮಾಂ ತತ್ವತೋ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವ ವಿಶತೆ ತದನಂತರಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಾಣಿ ಸದಾ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಾಣ್ಯಪಿ ಸದಾ ಕುರುವಾಣೋ ಮದ್ವ್ಯಪಾಶಯ ಮತ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದಾದವಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಪದಮು ವ್ಯಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಬಿ ಡಿವೋಟೆಡ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ಲಿ then you will know what in truth i am and who i am he is referring to himself lord krishna is telling whoever practices devotion properly will be able to know him and he tells that particular devotee forthwith enters into him and in the next verse he says even though a person might be engaged in all types of activities but if that person has taken refuge in me if he surrenders himself to me leading pure life based on ethical and moral values he will reach me by my grace mat prasadat avapnoti shashvatam padam avyayam categorically lord krishna says he reaches me by my grace he becomes recipient of my grace and he comes to that eternal and imperishable abode and then he tells further it's all right that means a person has to engage himself in some devotion or he has to undergo some exercises to purify himself then probably he may get grace what about the sinner what about the man who is totally absorbed in the world who is not able to separate himself from the world to whom world is very real who is very much attached to the world and worldly things in order to satisfy his never ending desires he goes on committing all sorts of crimes and sins in a way he reduces himself into a state of utter hopelessness that means such a person cannot think of grace that is grace of god flows only on the good no lord krishna clarifies that point in the verse number 58 he tells chapter 18 mat chittaha sarva durgaani mat prasada tarishyasi atacheto mahankara nashoshyasi vinangshyasi api chetsu duracharo ಭಜತೆ ಮಾಮನನ್ಯ ಭಾಕ್ ಸಾಧುರೇವ ಸಮಂತವ್ಯ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತೋ ಹಿ ಸಹ 
क्षिप्रम भवति धर्मात्मा शश्वच्छाति निगछति कौंते प्रतिजानी ही नमे भक्त प्रणश्यति लॉर्ड कृष्ण फर्स्ट ही टेल्स हाउ वन शुड डिरेक्ट हिमसेल्फ टूवर्ड्स गॉड दट वन वे ऑफ गेटिंग गॉड्स क्रेस Your heart is fixed onto the world, so you are not able to see God. You are aspiring for worldly joys, so you are not aspiring for the joy of seeing God. So you must become aware of your state of affairs. you must know your position until and unless you know your position you will not be able to appreciate the spiritual ideas if you turn yourself towards the divine power in course of time you will see how you will overcome all difficulties and you will understand all these difficulties vanished on account of god's grace but on the other hand if you are egoistic if you don't listen to what i say then the result is you shall perish utterly machittaha sarva durgaani mat prasada tarishyasi atha cheto mahankara tat nasroshyasi vinangshyasi what's the meaning of perishing that means he is again and again under the clutch of birth and death as long as one is under the clutch of birth and death he cannot overcome suffering it is a continuous suffering the lord is not saying that the grace is conditioned by anything but he is indicating certain situations when grace is found to flow in firstly when one loves god and takes refuge in him which is easy if one really loves grace descends on him secondly when the heart of the devotee is fixed on the lord and he has renounced the self destructive path of heedlessness to divine commandments grace descends on him and by that grace he overcomes all obstacles but suppose he is a sinful person what about him lord krishna gives assurance even to this people who commit violence and crimes in what way he gives assurance he is giving assurance itself is a grace you must note that it was not necessary for him to give any assurance at all a sinful man doesn't deserve any assurance of grace and kindness because he commits so much atrocities on the society he deserves to be punished 
severely. But Lord Krishna says, well, he can have hope only if he turns his mind towards me. If he resolves from now onwards, I don't engage any longer in doing wrong things or in hurting the people. If he resolves that he will not commit any crimes and if he tries to practice some devotional practices, the Lord will be pleased by his resolution. Because he has formed the right resolution, he becomes recipient of the grace. But the point is, he must turn to the divine power. He must turn to God. Then only he can expect the grace. Otherwise, even if the grace is there, he will not recognize it. So once he takes to spiritual practices, even though he might be a most sinful person, he gets rid of all impurities, all crimes are washed away, and he attains peace. Lord Krishna says, Proclaim it boldly, O Arjun, my devotee never perishes. Proclaim it boldly. These are the words of Lord Krishna. That means, when a sinner rightly resolves, he will certainly begin to discover the benign flow of grace surrounding him. So, these are the methods by which we should recognize the flow of grace. But as I said earlier, you can immensely feel the grace of God by engaging yourself in spiritual practices which we call self-effort. Effort must be there. You must try. Try to follow. Approach the Guru in all humbleness. Take his guidance. Follow his instructions. Be determined. Then only it is possible to get the grace. But if you are not thinking in those terms, then it is extremely difficult for you to understand any relevance of grace at all. That's why Lord Krishna says again in the Gita, Uddhared Atmanatmanam, Atmanam Avasadayet, Atmai Vakyatmano Banduhu, Atmai Varipuratmanaha. You have to raise your drooping mind. Mind is just lost in this world. You must try to raise that mind. You should never weaken any more. If you train the mind properly, then 
your mind becomes your friend. If you don't give attention to training of the mind, as most people do, your mind itself becomes your enemy. You don't care for grace. You don't care for God. You don't care for anybody. Then whom do you care? You care for your own self. But you can't hold on to, to that position for a long time. Sooner or later you will find how miserable you will be. Sri Ramakrishna also said self-effort and earnestness are important. Lord Jesus also emphasizes self-effort. Ask and it shall be given. Seek ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You have to do your part. That's why you have come. That's why you have come in this life. To do your part. If you are not doing your part, if you are not trying yourself honestly to know the truth, to see God, then you are not fulfilling your duty. People are very emphatic about duties, but, they are, but their duty is different. They mean the duty regarding the worldly things. Nobody thinks to pray to God is one's duty. Nobody thinks that way. But this life is given to you to think of God, to see Him, to work for it. That's your spiritual duty. You have neglected it, so you are suffering. So you have no peace. So every day you are quarreling, every day you are misunderstanding, all for petty things you become upset. All these things are happening because you are not performing your spiritual duty. You are not trying to control your ego, control your anger, control your jealousy, control your hatred. You have just given free reign. So, they are all playing havoc. That's the reason. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, I have cooked and placed the food before you. Now you must use your hand to put the food into your mouth. That much effort is needed. Everything is done. Extend your hand, take the food and put it into your mouth. Of course, the child cannot lift its hand. It doesn't know how to take the food. Then the mother helps. That's true. But that's a different situation. You are aware of what you can do then why don't you do it? That's the point. So, Sri Ramakrishna said, Divine grace descends upon the aspirant only after he has prayed to God with intense yearning for realization. Only after the devotee has practiced spiritual disciplines. That means intense self-effort is important to get the divine grace. Once Sri Ramakrishna 
was explaining God's ways to some devotees. Suddenly, Sri Ramakrishna had a vision. He saw the lake at Kamarpakur. He saw there a man removing green scum which had covered part of the lake and then he was drinking the water. The water was clear as crystal only because that green scum covered it so the man had to remove it in order to drink it. In the same way Satchidananda has been covered by the scum of Maya. He who puts the green scum aside can drink the water. That means you have to remove the green scum that requires effort. On another occasion, Sri Ramakrishna gave an example of a sailor. The wind of God's grace is continuously blowing. Lazy sailors on this sea of life don't take advantage of it. But the active and the strong always keep the sails of their minds unfurled to catch the friendly breeze and thus reach their destination. They reach the destination very quickly. So keeping the sails unfurled signifies self-effort. That would enable a spiritual aspirant to catch the breeze of ever-flowing ever divine grace. The Divine Grace is like light, is always spreading its rays. Sun's light is spreading everywhere. In order to enjoy that light, what needs to be done is that we should only open the doors and windows so that the sunlight may come into the home through all directions. Herein comes the importance of effort. Even though the sunlight is there, if you close the windows and the doors, how can you have sunlight? How can you say sunlight is not falling into my home. Sunlight is only for certain people, not for everybody. You can't say like that. On another occasion, Sri Ramakrishna said, Can one find pearls in knee-deep waters? One will have to deep down into the very depths of the ocean to, pick, to procure pearls. Even so, one must undertake a long and probably a tiresome and adventurous journey on the spiritual path to get the revelation of the truth. So, when one is engaged in continuous practices, God's grace flows upon him and he will understand it. How he is overwhelmed by God's grace. How insignificant he was, but how God made him thoroughly pure and precious 
and how he showed grace upon him. Once the father of Parvati, the divine consort of Lord Shiva, he said to Parvati to get him realization of the divine supreme. Because the father knew that Parvati was uh, revered by all the gods and she is the divine consort of Lord Shiva himself. She is knower of truth. So, why not she give that experience to him? Then the Divine Mother replied, O oh Father, if you are really aspiring for realizing the truth, then you should engage yourself in spiritual disciplines. That much self-effort is important. You can't have that blessed experience simply because I am your daughter. So she is telling her own father that way. Do some effort. Then you will understand. So always there is importance for the self-effort. Once Sri Ramakrishna said, you may try one thousand times, but nothing can be achieved without God's grace. One cannot see God without His grace. So, then what is the meaning, necessity or purpose of our spiritual strivings? Then, to take an example, the sky is clear, the whole place is flooded by sunshine. But if you stay in the basement, you avoid the sunshine and its effects on your rickety body. Suppose you come up the steps, your unhealthy confines, leave those unhealthy confines and go into the open air, you will begin to get health and strength. Can you get that if you are remaining yourself in the basement? Grace is sometimes hidden, sometimes open. Sometimes it is soothing, sometimes it is scorching. Sometimes it comes upon us like a shower of flowers, sometimes like a thunderbolt. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavatam, How I show grace to a person. He tells in the Bhagavat, I take away the fortune of those people to whom I show my grace. Because he provides a situation wherein that person should entirely depend on him. And Sri Krishna explains it Intoxicated with wealth, a person becomes stiff with pride 
and disregards everything and disregards even God. In another passage in the same Bhagavad, Lord Krishna says, I gradually deprive the man of his wealth to whom I choose to extend my special grace. Thereupon, everybody abandons him, finding him penniless and deep in misery. Then I come and take him to my bosom and help him in every manner and show him all grace that is required. You know, there is a famous uh, episode of the great devotee, Bhakta Sudam, a great devotee he was. How the Lord's grace flowed upon him. How the Lord was immensely pleased by him. He was a very, very good friend of Lord Krishna in his younger days. Both Sudama and Krishna. They were learning under a teacher. They had become very close friends. Later on, Lord Krishna became the king of Dwarka and this Sudama, a poor Brahmin, he led his life doing worship he had a family, he had many children his earning was not good enough so, there was always some trouble in the home and the wife became very unhappy. She said, how do you feed the children? There is so much poverty. Why can't you go and ask your friend? You said Krishna was your friend in your younger days. Why don't you go and ask him to do something to you? Then the Sudama thought for a while, very good, because you are telling me I will go. He did not react. He said, all right. He thought in a different way. Now the occasion has come. The occasion has come to see his dearest friend. That was his concern. Not about asking to remove the poverty and so on. Now the wife was giving him an opportunity to go to Lord Krishna. He was so happy. And well, I am going to meet my friend. Should I go empty hand? I should give something. Then the wife gave some flattened rice tied up in a corner of a cloth. Then he went to see Lord Krishna. His daily routine was always he would repeat divine name of Krishna and he would always sing devotional songs. He was completely peaceful inside. He completely relayed that everything is done by God. Who am I? Who am I to look after my wife, my children, etc. Everybody is being looked after by God himself. He had that firm conviction and firm faith and tremendous love towards Krishna. When he went there, Lord Krishna knew he is coming. He treated him very well. He gave him a good feast, made him very happy and Sudama felt immensely joyful 
because he is seeing Lord Krishna, the Supreme God himself. So, by seeing him, he got all fulfillment. He didn't want anything. By the by, he forgot to ask Krishna what far he had come. Krishna also did not ask him. After a long time you have come, what is the purpose, what do you want? Like that he didn't ask. He simply kept quiet. Then everything done, then Sudama was returning back home. While on his half way, he suddenly remembered, oh, my wife told me to ask Krishna to do something to remove poverty. I didn't ask. I didn't ask, what should I answer my wife now? That was troubling him a bit. But then, he surrendered himself to Krishna. Oh Lord, you yourself take care of that. I don't know anything. But he was returning home. By that time, the old house has vanished. There is a big uh, palatial building. And his wife and children, they were all in a very happy mood. They have got a lot of food stuff in the home. Everything was quite changed. He could not believe, he could not recognize his own home. Because the original home was not there anymore. So all these things happened by the grace of Krishna. He just willed, well let it be done. It was done. So this is the way how God shows his grace. When the devotee loves God intensely, when God's love turns towards the devotee, then you will see the flow of divine grace. So all our suffering is because we are separated from God. That is the reason. Sometimes, on account of uh, bad experiences, finally we come around and understand the significance of grace. We have got an incident in Swami Vivekananda's life too. Swami Vivekananda before he became a monk when he was Narendra Nath. He had to pass through severe hardships which troubled him very much. But then Finally, he came to Sri Ramakrishna and prayed to him to remove all the difficulties. And Sri Ramakrishna tells him, well, why should you have to worry? Go, go pray to Divine Mother. She will remove all your difficulties. Sri Ramakrishna said him in such a way, Swami Vivekananda went to Divine Mother, Dakshineshwar Kali Temple, very nearby, and when he stood there, he saw the Divine Mother smiling and talking to Vivekananda. How could it happen? By the grace of Sri Ramakrishna. So, Sri Ramakrishna's grace flowed upon him. Sri Ramakrishna knew the purity of the heart and he wanted to see that Vivekananda accept Divine Mother. Brahman and Shakti, they are inseparable. It is not simply enough to accept Brahman 
he should accept its power too brahman and its power purusha and prakriti both are inseparable upwards and reverse of the same coin so he wanted to give that experience to vivekananda up to that time he had not had faith about the divine mother but thence forward he became thoroughly transformed then he began to say everything is mother that is how we see how the grace works but what needs to be done we have to realize our spiritual duties accordingly we should perform them then you will see how the grace flows upon everyone the indication of the flow of grace is you become more and more spiritual you become more and more peaceful you become more and more cheerful and you begin to love everybody that is the indication of the intense flow of grace upon you with these words i conclude my talk thank you o tahana bhavato sahano bhunaktu सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीनाबधीतमस्तुमाषावे ओ शाशाशा हरि ओ तत्सत मे द डिवाइन लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टस may he nourish us may we work in harmony with great vigor may our study be illuminating and fruitful may we not hate each other peace 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 be unto all